Hi, welcome back to our second show. And uh, that little pudgy blonde that you saw in the credits, that was me a number of years ago. Now I turned into a pudgy brunette. Um, we have tonight some very exciting guests, two women who changed their careers uh, more or less midlife. They're not really old enough to say midlife, but uh, that's how I'm describing it. And uh, they wrote some pretty steamy novels. We're going to introduce them to you in just a minute. But first, my wonderful band, we're going to do a number for you called Nice and Easy. <laughs> Take it nice and easy It's gonna be so easy For us to fall in love Hey baby, what's your hurry? Relax, don't you worry We're gonna fall in love Make all the stops along the way. The problem now, of course, is to simply hold your horses. To rush would be a crime, but nice and easy does it every time. Simply hold your horses To rush would be a crime But nice and easy does it Nice and easy does it Nice and easy does it Every time Thank you so much I'm going to introduce our exciting guest to you right now. These ladies are Joan Lee and Charlene Cooper Cohn. We're going to talk about their books. I've just moved back to Los Angeles in the last few months after living in New York for over 20 years. And one of the exciting things about coming back is I've made the most incredible friends. Um, Joan Lee, it turns out, is a neighbor of mine lives uh, two doors away right? and uh, we won't even talk about her husband but we will mention that he's the famous Stan Lee who's the creator of everybody from Spider-Man to the Incredible Hulk. Um, Charlene I met through actually a cousin of hers, a mutual friend. Charlene was an interior designer, a very successful one, two small children, lost her husband, married a wonderful man who I've gotten to know and they have built this incredible art collection. But Charlene also, in a certain period in her life, decided to write some wonderful steamy novels. Joan, I want to start out with you. Um, you were, I believe, an actress, were you yes, not? I was an actress. Yes, in England? In England, yes. I was an actress, and then I did some work over here. The last thing was Just Tell Me What You Want with Ali McGraw. And Alan King. Alan King produced right. it. Right. Jay and Preston Allen wrote it. Right. But um, you were telling me how you met your husband. We get back to Stan again. But it was interesting. You were a model before yes. being an actress. When and I first came to this country, right. I did some modeling and I mm -hmm. did some trade films. And I, we threw a cocktail party. I was a hat model. And Stan came to the door and said, I'm going to marry that girl. Ooh, and he did, thank God. Oh, and luckiest day of my life. And we've, you've been married how long? 
I'm not going to tell okay. you. You're going to start right. to date me okay. forever right. and ever and ever. Okay, that's wonderful. Well, here we are, three ladies who have all been married um, over 20 years. Well, close, Charlene, you've been married to Marty, what, close to 20 years? Close to 18. Right, wonderful. There's something the matter with three Hollywood ladies that are married 20 years or more. Um, so at a certain period after having a child, yes. And um, being a housewife, being I guess, really. a housewife. Yes. Okay, I didn't want to use that word because certain oh, ladies don't like word. the word <laughs> housewife. I'm one of those ladies that likes the yes. word housewife. I'm uh, sort of a joke with various people that know me because they call up and I say, I can't talk to you now, I'm in the kitchen cooking dinner. But um, so you say you were a housewife. We, when did you write the book? Well, uh, I think I want to hold this book up because uh, it's got a wonderful cover and I love this title, The Pleasure Palace. Joan, when, when did you write that book? I wrote the book about three years ago mm -hmm. in longhand. You just suddenly one day said, I feel like putting some words down. This story came to me? How, how yes, does a person... I think, I, oh, I don't know. I think that uh, everybody's got a book in them somewhere. It's just sitting down with discipline, right? Sitting down and doing it. I don't know. My producing partner, you know, we have a production company. That's my newest thing, is out there in the audience. Judy, are we going to take time and sit down and write a sexy novel Absolutely. One day. <laughs> Do we have a book in us? Absolutely, anyway. of course. So how long, you wrote this in I wrote longhand? I wrote longhand and I gave it, said to Stan, do you know anybody in the business that you could send it to? And his very good friend was a man called Jonathan Dolger. Who's an agent in an New York. An agent in yes, New I York. Yes, I know who he is. And he sent it off and he said, please be gentle with her because he was convinced he was going to come back with, don't waste my time. <laughs> but Jonathan said, there's a great story here, stretch it. He sent it to Jackie Farber of Delacorte. Jackie bought it, then ha -ha. Pan Books bought it, and there we were. So much for husbands. So much for husbands. They're not you. always right. That's well. Anyway, yeah. now I have a very lovely, supportive husband. I know. Except when I said I'm going to do a TV show, he said, "What? How are you going to fit that in between the uh, cooking and the producing and the everything else?" Anyway, of course. Now, Charlene, as I say, we met through your cousin, yes. who is a mutual friend, and I met your wonderful husband, who's. He's a consulting psychologist, right? No, what he's is a it psychiatrist does? who doesn't practice psychiatry. He's a corporate management consultant who teaches lending institutions and financial institutions how to increase their revenues. It has nothing to do with psychology or psychiatry. He switched careers. There's another man who was sort of in, in midlife switched. Yes. And this fabulous art collection, which I know you've opened your house up many times. It, you, their art collection is something to see. Anyway, let's get back to... Your book. Now, let's see. The first book that you wrote was called um, The Day After Tomorrow. Yes. When did you write that book? I wrote that in the mid-70s. It was and published in 1978. Did you as well suddenly one day just decide to... Uh, just to write a book? Okay. We're, yes. No, I suffered a tragedy in my life. Uh, and your your husband yes, my died husband and died. left you with two little children. Very small children yes. mm -hmm. and deaths and mostly grief. Mm -hmm. And the only way I could come to terms with that grief was to write. I started writing poetry to him as a way of expressing myself. And that developed into the skill to write. Okay, I want to definitely come back to that. We're going to take a little break now. I want to come back to that, Charlene. I started the piano when I was three years old. We didn't have electric pianos, obviously, at that time, but uh, there is a company here called Brian Lee Music, and Brian not only has wonderful uh, acoustic Yamahas, he has the most complete selection of wonderful electric pianos. Brian Lee is on Olympic Boulevard in Los Angeles and also on Ventura and Encino. See Brian Lee Music. <laughs> My producer, director, has never worked with a harp before and it flabbergasts him and he somehow thinks that the audience should have a harp lesson. So before we go into our instrumental, I'm going to give you a short harp lesson. Um, there is a pedal for every note, D, C, B, E, F, G, A. Hopefully you've gotten a picture of the pedals. This is a C. There are three notches on each pedal. Here is a C flat, all on the same note. C flat, C natural, C sharp. If I have not confused you enough as yet, I will tell you that the uh, reason for that is that if there was 
a string for every note as there is on a piano, the harp would stretch out too far and you couldn't reach it. So um, it's a complicated instrument. Also, you do not play with your little finger. You only play with four fingers. Makes it doubly hard. Uh, now that you are perfectly capable of playing the harp and taking this job away from me, we're going to uh, do our instrumental, Rogers and Hearts, My Romance.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, Joan. Um, Joan sees the harp going in and out of my house yes, all the I time. Do. Charlene, we left off where you were saying that uh, when your husband died, left you with two little children for your new husband, you were writing love poems, and that's how this all started. Yes, that's exactly how it happened. You know, writing, you have to sit and do it, and learning to write. I sat for hours at night when I couldn't sleep, and crying wasn't enough, and wrote poetry, and developed the discipline to do it every day. And once I realized I could do that every day and enjoyed it, then I start, tackled bigger things. Did you talk into a tape recorder? Did you, now Joan wrote in longhand. Did you type? Did you, how did you actually put those words down? and then I typed. Mm -hmm. But I saved some information to tell you as a surprise. Jackie Farber was my first editor, too. Oh, isn't that wonderful? I thought you ladies would have a lot in common. Actually, these ladies had never met before today and had each read each other's books, so I thought that would be very interesting. That's amazing, Jackie Farber. Um, Good editor, too. Yes. Now, Charlene, as I recall, they put a much more conservative cover on your book in this country. I thought that was interesting. And Mine you, Joan, too, yeah. yours too. I didn't know that. You oh, oh, let's hold up right. the difference. And now this one is the American Jackie version. Jackie Farber's cover, yes. Notice, um, oh, there we are. Notice how conservative just the two little knees. Do we have a picture of that? Now we have the cover from England, whoop de doo You notice her entire uh, <clears throat> chest is hanging out. Can we, do we have a picture of that? Let's, I think that's funny. <laughs> the, one the, to the difference other. that between the two countries. One would always assume that England, of course, would be much more conservative. And that showed incredibly well in England. The Pleasure Palace. Probably the yes. cover. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I think it was your writing. Corky, now, I, Charlie, did a, I did yes. a British tour with my first novel, The Day yes. After Tomorrow. And The Day After Tomorrow had more sexual explicit scenes than any of the books since. Right. And when I did an American tour, everyone in America said, Oh, a sexy book. Well, how did your family feel about this? And how did your children feel about this? And that's all they wanted to talk about. When I went to Britain and I was interviewed all over the country, they wanted to know about the characters and me as a writer. And sex was something they accepted as part of life. They didn't have to go behind the barn for it. And that's what amazes me of why they have such titillating covers on their books and why they feel it's important. Charlene, we could really go into something about that because my ex-husband many, many years ago was English. Uh, so I have a definite have feelings. <laughs> We're not going to go into that. That's a whole other show. Anyway, I want let's zero in on the difference in the covers. Now, this was, of course, the American. This is the American cover, version. which is all covered up and very conservative, right? Do She's we have a picture uh, of that? That's the that's the one I have. That's right. Okay, I have and not this seen is the British version, which is hysterical because her chest once again is hanging. It's out. not so much that; it's that she's wearing a dress that looks like Fredericks of Hollywood. Uh oh! <laughs> I hope color, Fredericks does well. Fredericks may love us. The color is lurid pink. Right. And she's wearing a straw hat and a fur coat. Now, my mother always <laughs> taught me you never do those two <laughs> things together. <laughs> that's oh, wonderful. How, how could they figure that one out? But anyway, now, um, Joan, are you writing? Another yes, novel? I, have, you in the one midst? With, I yes. have one with my uh, agent now, and mm -hmm. I'm busy on a third. Do we have a title on that, Isha? I don't think you're supposed to give away okay. titles. I don't know. People always tell you that somebody else will be thinking the same thing. Okay, Charlene, before we wrap this up, what is the title of the book that you're currently working on? I have one coming out in November called Lives of Considerable Value. Ooh, it's a story of a two title. sisters. Okay, I like it. Thank I like you. it. Anyway, um, are, are we running out of time here, folks? We are. I thank you both so much for taking the time to come and talk to us this evening. Thank and um, I'll see you both me. soon. We'll have a yes. little dinner with our husbands. Okay. Next thank time you. I'd just like to sit and listen to you play. Oh, thank you, darling. Wonderful. Thank you. I'll play out on the roadside. In Wonderful. Front of our oh, I think we have the whole hill covered. <laughs> thank you. And uh, thank you both again yeah, for coming. You. Same here. Joan Lee, Charlene Cooper Cohn, our guests of the evening. Thank you. We have some lovely sponsors on this show, one of them being Matinee Jewelers at 10 East Holly in Pasadena. You like my earrings? And also, our guest hair is done by Heidi's in the Beverly Center, which is a terrific beauty shop. I also go there. We have this wonderful makeup woman on our show who does my hair for the show, but at other times, I do go to Heidi's in the Beverly Center.
Charlene Cooper Cohn uh, had to leave for a speaking engagement this evening, but I had this wild idea to uh, talk Joan into reading us a steamy passage from her book. Joan, did you pick out something really sexy? I'm going to give you a little um, background music. Read us a little bit from The Pleasure Palace. Stretched out on his bed, Jaffa lay naked under a fine, soft muslin sheet. His mind lazily drifted to Jan as he puffed on a thin black reed, and the sweet smell of hashish permeated the room. Minutes later, there was a knock at the door, and Yana entered. She was tall and powerfully built. Her six-foot frame was lean and well-muscled. She was an ex-guerrilla fighter as well as an expert masseuse. No words were spoken. She silently slid the sheet from his body, then she gently positioned him on his stomach, moving him easily, effortlessly. As she spread the aromatic oil over his back, she skillfully kneaded the folds of soft flesh. She touched each pressure point with confidence as she massaged him, her moments slow and easy. They were meant not to arouse, but to relax. Yana's objective was to bring a feeling of peace to the flesh that hung around his body, as if threatening to absorb him. Each stroke was warm and peaceful and lovingly given. Her strong hands worked his obese body steadily and tirelessly. If you want to know the rest of that chapter, you're going to have to buy the book. Listen, Joan, any day that you want to invite me over for tea, uh, I'll be over and you can read me I'd the love rest to. of We'll the have book. a little champagne and go <laughs> chapter by chapter. Our guest of the evening, Joan Lee, reading from her book, Pleasure Palaces. As I mentioned earlier, I uh, am involved in a new career as well for the last couple of years. I'm a partner in a production company called Hale Arnold Productions. Hopefully you saw our four-hour miniseries on NBC this past year. One of the projects that my partner Judy Arnold and I are developing is the life story of Al Dubin. And people say to us, Al Dubin, isn't he uh, an agent over at William Morris? Al Dubin was one of the greatest songwriters that has ever lived. He was probably the biggest songwriter in the 30s and 40s. And he's written so many wonderful songs. Even as we speak, his show, 42nd Street, is playing all over the world. Al is really the forgotten man. His life is incredible. And I want to do an Al Dubin song to close this evening. I'm really in the mood after hearing Joan's book. It's uh, called You're Getting to Be a Habit with Me. Every kiss, every hug seems to act just like a drug. You're getting to be a habit with me. Let me stay in your arms. I'm addicted to your charms. You're getting to be a habit with me. I used to think your love was something that I could take or leave alone. But now I find that I must have my supply. I need you for my own. Oh, I can't break away. I must have you every day as regularly as coffee or tea you've got me in your clutches and I can't break free you're getting to be a habit with me
there's coffee or tea You've got me in your clutches and I can't break free You're getting to be a habit with me Thanks so much for joining us tonight. I'd like you to uh, meet the band as we say goodnight. Gene Estes on vibes. Earl Palmer on drums. Herb Mickman on bass. We invite you to join us again next Monday night. Mm -hmm.